The ethical and socially responsible goals of leaders and their organizations include providing adequately for members of the diverse workforce. Ethical leaders should therefore feel compelled to use merit instead of favoritism or bias as a basis of making human resource decisions. A firm that embraces diversity is also behaving in a socially responsible manner. According to research and opinion, managing for diversity also brings the firm a competitive advantage. A major component of the marketing advantage of diversity is that the workforce matches the diversity of a company's customer base and has an edge in appealing to those customers. Companies with a favorable record in managing diversity have a distinct advantage in recruiting and retaining talented people. Also, a company that does not welcome a diverse workforce shrinks its supply of potential candidates. Heterogeneity in the workforce may offer the company a competitive advantage as well as improve problem solving and decision making capabilities. Creative solutions are more likely to be reached with a diversity of perspectives. Similar to the creativity advantage, cultural diversity can enhance team performance, often because diverse backgrounds are associated with diverse information, knowledge, and perspectives that can be used to solve problems. The leader of a diverse group must help members collaborate, otherwise the advantages of diverse perspectives will be lost. A multicultural leader is a leader with skills and attitudes to relate effectively and motivate people across race, gender, age, social ability, and lifestyle. To influence, motivate, and inspire culturally diverse people, the leader must be aware of overt and subtle cultural differences. Although such culturally based differences are generalizations, they function as starting points in the leader's attempt to lead a person from another culture. To manage, in a culturally diverse workplace, leaders need to understand key dimensions of differences in cultural values and the influence of cultural values on leadership style. One way to understand how national cultures differ is to examine their values or cultural dimensions. Many of the cultural dimensions presented here are based on the Global Leadership and Organizational Behavior Effectiveness, GLOBE, a research program in 62 cultures that builds on previous analysis of cultural dimensions. Keep in mind that these cultural dimensions are stereotypes that apply to a representative person from a particular culture and are not meant to insult anybody. Individual differences are substantial. Performance orientation is the degree to which a society encourages or should encourage and rewards group members for performance improvement and excellence. Assertive people enjoy competition in business, in contrast to less assertive cultural groups who prefer harmony and solidarity. The United States and Australia tend to score high in this dimension, whereas Sweden and New Zealand score low. Future-oriented individuals delay gratification, plan, and make investments in the future. Time orientation is the importance nations and individuals attach to time. People with an urgent time orientation perceive time to be a scarce resource and tend to be impatient. Humane orientation is the degree to which society encourages and rewards individuals for being fair, altruistic, and caring of others. In-group collectivism is the degree to which individuals express and should express pride, loyalty, and cohesiveness in their organizations and family. Gender egalitarianism is the degree to which a culture minimizes gender inequality. Power distance is the degree to which members of a society expect and should expect power to be distributed unequally. Uncertainty avoidance is the extent to which members of a society rely on social norms, rules, and procedures to lessen the unpredictability of future events. Work orientation is the number of hours per week and hours per week per year people expect to invest in work versus leisure activities. Effective leaders recognize that a person's national values might influence his or her behavior. Some managers are more effective at leading diverse groups than others. Cultural sensitivity, cultural intelligence, and certain specific global leadership skills are essential for inspiring people from cultures other than one's own. Although they reinforce each other, here we describe cultural sensitivity and cultural intelligence separately. 
Global leadership skills encompasses so many behaviors that they receive a section of their own. Leaders, as well as others who are attempting to influence a person from another country, must be alert to possible cultural differences. A cross-cultural leader must be patient, adaptable, flexible, and willing to listen and learn. All of these characteristics are part of cultural sensitivity, an awareness of and a willingness to investigate the reasons why people from another culture act the way they do. A person with cultural sensitivity will recognize certain nuances in customs that will help build better relationships with work associates from another culture. Cultural sensitivity is also important because it helps a person become a multicultural worker. Such an individual is convinced that all cultures are equally good and enjoys learning about other cultures. Language differences create problems because U.S. workers can become frustrated by coworkers' accents and limited English skills. Non-English speakers may feel that they don't fit well into the team. Differences in religion are the source of many misunderstandings. In many cultures, religion dominates life in ways that Americans find difficult to comprehend. Work habits vary enough across cultures to create friction and frustration. Employees in some cultures are unwilling to spend personal time on work. Women's roles may differ considerably from those in the United States. Women in many countries may not have the same independence or access to education and higher level jobs as American women. What constitutes acceptable personal appearance and behavior varies considerably across cultures. Many workers around the world may perceive American workers as over-friendly, aggressive, or rude. Generational differences are another manifestation of cultural differences, quite often within a leader's national culture. Cultural sensitivity is enhanced by cultural training and also by simply listening carefully and observing. A key principle is to be flexible when dealing with people from other cultures. Cultural norms about expressing ideas vary across cultures. Team members from relatively egalitarian cultures such as the United States may be accustomed to voicing their candid opinions and ideas. Giving critical feedback presents transcultural challenges because feedback is perceived differently depending somewhat on culture. In general, global leadership skills refer to the availability to exercise effective leadership in a variety of countries. This definition stems from the idea that the essence of global leadership is the ability to influence people who are dissimilar to the leader and stem from different cultural backgrounds. Such skills would therefore include the concepts already reviewed of cultural sensitivity, being a multicultural worker, and cultural intelligence. Understanding the culture from another country is also important. Here, we look at global leadership skills from several perspectives, including success factors in international positions, motivating workers in different cultures, and the effectiveness of management practices. Global leadership skills are so important that they improve a company's reputation and contribute to a sustainable competitive advantage. These performance factors include profitability and productivity, continuity and efficiency, commitment and morale, and adaptability and innovation. A study was conducted of success factors in international management positions. Two traits were specifically related to success in conducting international business, sensitivity to cultural differences, and being culturally adventurous. The adventurous aspect refers to a willingness to take chances and experiment with new culture. Tolerance for ambiguity is important for leaders in general, and especially important for developing global leadership skills. Every country he or she works in represents a new way of doing things. Tolerance for ambiguity is also a success factor when leading cross-cultural teams. One of the more pronounced cross-cultural differences is that various members of the team may have differing attitudes towards hierarchy and authority. A general challenge confronting the global leader is that techniques that work well in one culture may not necessarily work well in another. For organizations to value diversity and inclusion, top management must be committed to it. The commitment is clearest when it's embedded in organizational strategy, as well as in the life and culture of the organization. Company leadership should dedicate time to work personally on diversity and inclusion of initiatives. 
A true diversity strategy should encourage all employees to contribute their unique talents, skills, and expertise to the organization's operation, independent of race, gender, ethnic background, or any other definable difference. A high-impact diversity initiative for top-level organizational leaders to hold managers accountable for diversity results at all levels. Accountability for diversity results when achieving diversity objectives is included in performance evaluations and when compensation is linked in part to achieving diversity results. An essential initiative for building a diverse workforce is to recruit and retain members of the targeted minority group. Efforts at recruiting a culturally diverse workforce must be supported by a leadership and management approach that leads to high retention. To increase retention rates, diversity consultants advise employers to strengthen cultural training programs, recognize employees' hidden skills and talents, and give diversity committees clout with top management. Retaining employees is also a function of good leadership and management in general, such as offering workers challenging work, clear-cut goals, feedback, and valuable rewards for goal attainment. Mentoring is a key initiative for retaining minority group members as well as for facilitating their advancement. Diversity training has become widely used in terms of a method for enhancing diversity within organizations. The purpose of diversity training is to bring about workplace harmony by teaching people how to get along better with diverse work associates. Quite often the program is aimed at minimizing open expressions of racism and sexism. All forms of diversity training center on increasing people's awareness of and empathy for people who are different from them in some important way. Diversity training often emphasizes leveraging diversity to enhance performance. Training sessions in valuing difference focus on the ways in which men and women or people of different races reflect different values, attitudes, and cultural backgrounds. An essential part of relating more effectively to diverse groups is to empathize with their point of view. To help training participants develop empathy, representatives of various groups explain their feelings related to workplace issues. A frequently mentioned concern about diversity training is that it reinforces stereotypes. Participants are informed about group differences, such as cultural values and tactics that might be suggested for coping with these differences. Voluntary diversity training tends to be more effective than making training mandatory. For many years, companies and government agencies have prepared their managers and other workers for overseas assignments. A method frequently chosen is cross-cultural training, a set of learning experiences designed to help employees understand the customs, traditions, and beliefs of another culture. A major thrust to cross-cultural training is improving internal and external communications, including overcoming cross-cultural communication barriers like building trust and giving criticism. In many cultures, trust is built by slowing, developing a relationship through the means as frequent exchange of polite messages. The intentional leader who remains alert and cues in the environment can go a long way towards building relationships with people from different cultures. An important consideration in employee recruitment and hiring is to find a good person-organization fit, the compatibility of an individual with the organization. The compatibility often centers on the extent to which a person's major work-related values and personality traits fit major elements of the organizational culture. Following this idea, a person who is adventuresome and prone to risk-taking would achieve highest performance and satisfaction where adventuresome behavior and risk-taking are valued. Conversely, a methodical and conservative individual should join a slow-moving bureaucracy. Many business firms today are investing time and effort into recruiting and hiring employees who show a good person-organization fit. The selection strategy of this type can lead to a cohesive and strong organizational culture. The danger, however, is that when employers focus too sharply on cultural fit in the hiring process, they might inadvertently discriminate against protected classes of workers. Specifically, the hiring manager might focus on superficial aspects of conformity to culture, such as physical experience and which schools the candidate attended. The selection of candidates who look alike and act alike conflicts with a diversity strategy. Leaders can take the initiative to guard against this problem. 
The alternative is to focus on traits and behaviors such as intelligence or ability to be a team player. To achieve a multicultural organization, firms must practice leadership diversity, that is, have a culturally heterogeneous group of leaders. Many global firms have already achieved leadership diversity with respect to ethnicity. Sex is another key area for leadership diversity, with many organizations today having women in top executive positions. An organization with true leadership diversity also has a heterogeneous group of leaders in such positions as supervisors, middle managers, and team leaders.